you had a big impact on John Bonham in, in his drum set and style. Right. Now, Zeppelin actually opened up for, yes. for Vanilla Fudge. How did that come to be? Well, not only did they open up the very first gig, we paid half their fee, Vanilla Fudge, <laughs> because the promoter didn't want them. It was Barry Fay in, in Denver. We already sold out. It was Vanilla Fudge and Spirit, like 7,500 people. It was sold out. And he said, you know, I don't need them. And our agent was their agent, Zeppelin's agent. And my manager was, you know, we, my manager had a thing called Concerts East, and he ran concerts on the East Coast. And he was already tied in with uh, – with our lawyer was Zeppelin's lawyer, it was Hendrick's lawyer, you know, everybody's lawyer, Jeff Beck's lawyer. So we were all like in the same under the same housing. So so our agent was trying to get him on the show and he said that I don't need him. We're sold out. I don't need him. And he knew Jimmy Page from the Yardbirds. So, she, so our agent said, I'll tell you what, it's only fifteen hundred dollars. You pay half and the fudge will pay half. We didn't even know this until two thousand one. <laughs> you know, so we ended up paying half. They came on, they did okay, but people were yelling, bring on the fudge all the way through them and spirit. And then six months later, they were as big as we were. But when John Bonham saw my big drum set, you know, I'm always, I've always been from doing the clinics and, you know, just, I've always helped other drummers, you know, just, it's just a drumming thing, you know. As Joe Morello said, nobody has it all. We all steal from each other. So I met John Bonham. We heard the album first, and I heard his foot on Good Times, Bad Times. And I said, wow, this kid is amazing. Listen to that foot. You know? So then when I met him, he told me I was not the only idol. He had Buddy Rich, Gene Krupa, and me, and Mitch Mitchell, you know. But he really copped my power. He really loved my power. And I had done that triplet thing on the foot on one of my albums that he pointed out where it was. I didn't do it repetitively like he did. I did it more like a bop, 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 like that. So he took that and kept repeating it, like that, you know what I mean? So when I said, Man, I love that, he said, well, that's great. So I got it from you. I said, I don't do that. And he pointed out where I did it. Because, you know, even now, when we do stuff on records, I, I just play. I don't say this is well, this is the verse, unless there's a specific thing like I'm writing a, a Christian song now, and, and the drum part I want to be a certain way. So I'm working out parts that so they fit like a glove. But in those days, we just played, you know. And then we listen back to the album a few times, and you know, how many times do you listen to your own work, you know? So I didn't, forgot all about it, and he pointed it out, and I said, "Wow." And he said, I love that drum set. Can, can you think maybe you could hook me up with Ludwig to get an endorsement? I said, I'll try. You know, I had a big in with Ludwig. You know, I was like one of the biggest guys at the time. You know, and I was the only guy that had the big drums. And I was the only guy that had a maple drum set. It was the very first one. And uh, I called him up and I said, listen, there's this band opening up to call Led Zeppelin. This John Bonham is the name of the drum. He's really good. I think they're going to be big. It'd be worthwhile to give him an endorsement. So they said, yeah. I said, he wants a drum kit just like mine. So on my word, and I sent them the album, they gave him an endorsement, right? That had to be the understatement of six decades. They're going to be big. <laughs>